Amen. Praise the Lord for another day. Thank God for the word of the Lord. The Bible says the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway. The Bible teaches us that when I, my, thy word, David says, as we do as well, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And I praise God for the opportunity today to have a Bible in our hands. There are people in the world around us that do not have the Bible who would love to have a Bible. There are people in the world around us who have never opened the book. We'll be talking about that in a little, in a little bit different way later on. But I'm thankful that God has blessed us to be in a country where we have, in many cases, not just one Bible, but many Bibles, not just one translation but many translations, not just one version, but many versions. And by the grace of the Lord, we have all kinds of media to be able to tell us by um, the this, this spoken word that we can receive the word of the Lord in our heart. We want to take advantage of that this morning in the book of Joshua, chapter number 24, as we finish up on the life of the hero, the Old Testament hero we've been talking about recently, and that's Joshua. And so in Joshua, chapter number 24, we want to finish off with this chapter this morning with uh, Joshua's life and receive what God has for us in the day and time we live. I pray the Lord that the Bible tells us that the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It gets right down to where we live. And so the things we have need of, the Bible teaches us uh, in Old Testament and New Testament well as well, uh, the things we can do in order to be successful, not just in that day and time, but in this day and time as, as well. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That's God's promise. It's in the Deut book of Deuteronomy. It's in the book of Hebrews. And the Bible teaches us that he wants to be with us every day in every way. And I thank God this morning, as we look at the life of Joshua, we can find out what God did for Joshua. He wants to do for us. He is faithful where the Bible says he's not a respecter of persons. And if he made Joshua successful in the day and time he lives, he wants to make us successful as well. So Joshua chapter number 24, uh, let's start this morning with uh, verse number 1 as we look at the chapter. Pray that the Lord will give us the uh, word of the Lord as we have received it into our hearts. And the, by the great grace of God, um, he will teach us the things we um, have need of learning. Having an issue with my phone this morning. I apologize. Joshua 24. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your forefathers including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the river and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the river and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought your fathers out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the desert for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again and I delivered you out of his hand. And then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you, also the two Amorite kings. You did not do it with your own sword and bow. So I gave you a land in which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. 
Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our fathers up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, No! We will serve the Lord! Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses. Now then, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem he drew up for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the Lord of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua sent the people away, each to his own inheritance. After these things, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. And they buried him in the land of his inheritance, at Timnath Sirah, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. And Joseph's bones, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the tract of land that Jacob bought for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. And Eliezer, son of Aaron, died and was buried at Gibeah, which had been allotted to his son Phinehas in the hill country of Ephraim. Father, we thank you for this passage of Scripture and ask that you'll teach us those things you'd want us to know, knowing that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Pray today, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you'll allow us to realize that as the Holy Spirit anoints the word of the Lord to us, he brings us that perfection that is in Jesus Christ alone, not just the righteousness, but the ability by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit to rightly divide the word of truth. Pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you'll allow us today to receive that into our hearts as we glorify and honor you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name, praying once again, Lord, honor us in your presence as we honor you with our hearing, our receiving, and our obedience to the word in Jesus' name. Bless those who are here today, those who could not be here today, and bless those who are watching and listening to this later on, that you will be able to uh, touch their hearts, their souls, and allow them to know that you love them. It's your desire to be their, their Lord and Savior. And we ask you these things. We praise you for the, all of them in Jesus' name. Amen. This passage of scripture this morning, the 24th chapter of Joshua, uh, literally the last um, uh, thing we read about Joshua in the 
uh, book of Joshua, we find that he was test his testimony was he was safe uh, before the Lord and walking before the Lord in success all the days of his life. Notice that the promise that God made to him in Joshua chapter 1 is fulfilled in Joshua chapter 24, that no one was able to stand before Joshua, that they had victory after victory by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of God through him. And we praise the Lord this morning because that means that we have an opportunity to realize we can have victory day by day by the grace of the Lord, the goodness of God, as we walk and are led by him as Joshua was. We praise the Lord today because the Bible teaches us that God is not a respecter of persons, that that being we know as Jesus Christ walked with them, and by the grace of the Lord, by the, the Almighty God, He gave them success, even success after success, where the Bible says in this passage of Scripture, you did not win these lands by your sword and your spear, by your uh, armament and by your fighting, but I gave them to you. And quite literally, we find war after war that they fought, that the Lord did marvelous things in order for them to be able to find the victory in it. We talked about the sun and the moon standing still, about the uh, power of God and, and the hailstones that will fall down, so that so many of them died because the hailstones fell on them. We talked about the city of Jericho where many of them died because the wall fell flat and they were entombed literally in the walls. Uh, we talked about how God delivered them time after time, even bringing the enemy down where they began fighting among one, amongst one another in order for God to give them the victory in that way. And so as we look at those things, we recognize that God will be faithful to us. It was not just Joshua who is faithful. We talked last week about Caleb and Balaam, the opposites of the one who followed God, Caleb. Uh, the Bible tells us at the time he was 85 years old, he said, um, Joshua, if you will allot the land of the, of the giants to me, I will take that land. I'm as strong for war today as I was 40 years ago when I was 45 years old. And by the grace of the Lord, God gave him that land. I would challenge you to realize that many times as we start getting older, we start thinking we are less capable. And I would challenge you to realize that when we should not, as Paul tells the, uh, in the New Testament, tells Timothy, his son, uh, in the Lord, do not let men despise your youth, that you should also not let men despise your age, but rather by the grace of the Lord, um, finish strong. We are not in a, in a situation where God wants us, uh, like Caleb, to be 85 years old and then say, um, uh, he wants us to be like Caleb to say, I'm 85 years old today and I'm still ready for the battle, rather than saying, I'm worn out, I can't do anything anymore. By the grace of God, he will be with us day by day as long as we are walking his word. Um, we don't have to go um, to our grave sick. God can bring us there victor victoriously, and by the grace of God, it's his desire that we find uh, a testimony in him to the people around us about the grace and the goodness of the Lord as well. We talked about Caleb last week. We also talked about Balaam, who was the other side of that, who had decided to go his own way. Uh, he worked for money. When he got uh, the situation where he was in a place where he had the money, uh, he was then deceived by his own greed, and he died with the enemies of the Lord. We talked about Caleb and, and um, uh, Balaam as well. Uh, from the 20... Uh, second chapter, uh, we go backwards to the scriptures. We 24th chapter, we go backwards to the scriptures we skipped over because there are a lot of things involved in that, but they're not to the point of Joshua uh, specifically. And so uh, we talked about Joshua and um, the, the priest Eliezer as they uh, cast lots to give the land to the children of Israel as God portioned it out to them. Uh, we talked in the passage of scripture about um, the fact that God said, I kept my promises in the 21st chapter, verses 34, 33, 34, and 35. It says, I gave you all those things I said I was going to. Not one promise has not been fulfilled. And I challenge you to realize today that many times the reason that promise isn't fulfilled in our eyes is because we let go too soon. Uh, I think all of us recognize this, and so maybe giving you an example that we can grab a hold of here. When someone hands you something, you do not receive it until you take it from their hand. A bunch of gifts can be stretched out and never be received and never be given. Um, personal experience I've used more than one time, um, and it's of my own experience, and that's why I use it. Uh, it may be facetious to you, and if it is, I ask you just to set it aside. But someone wanted me to give me, get, to give me something one day. It was something of great value, but I realized as the Lord touched my heart that there was a string attached to it, that that string literally would become a rope and maybe even a noose, and so the Lord told me to just say, no, uh, no, thank you. And I said, no, thank you. In fact, more than one time I could tell you um, about two different ins instances specifically that that happened. And the gift was not received, so it was not a gift. It was never given. And I challenge you to realize this passage of Scripture when the Bible talks about God saying, I gave you the land that I promised I was going to give you. Many of them, up until this point in time, had not received it. In fact, when we go into the book of Judges, we'll still find that there were uh, many of the tribes who had not received their land yet, either because they were tired of war, 
and didn't want to go in and fight some more or for whatever other reason that they took a long time before they actually received an inheritance. We will find that later on in the book of Judges that the, the tribe of Dan had not received their uh, inheritance until years after Joshua had died. But that didn't mean that God didn't give it. It didn't mean that God hadn't driven the enemies away from them. It just meant that they did, did not go and get it. And so it's kind of like I've used the illustration as well. When someone tells you, um, I have tickets for you, just go to Will Call and get them. The tickets could be paid for, they could be for you, they could be a, a wonderful evening that you might have or a day that you might have, but if you don't go to will call and claim them, you never get them. And there are promises of God, literally thousands of promises of God in the word of the Lord that we can have if we will claim them and be obedient to receive them into, into our uh, lives if, if we will do that. If not, the promises are given and never received. Not because God didn't give them, not because he doesn't want to give them, but because we haven't received them. So I challenge you today, when you read the word of the Lord, as this passage of scripture says, when God gives the promise, when he keeps the promise, receive it into your heart. Receive the, the promise of the Lord and receive the blessing of God because that's his desire. Uh, the Bible tells in the book of Psalms, I think I mentioned this last week, the book of Psalms, it gives God great pleasure to give prosperity to his servants. And in many cases, uh, the reason we don't get prosperous is because we know where he knows he can't trust us with that. Um, one passage of the scripture book of Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, tells us, it is God that gives you power to get wealth. When you and I get to the position where we start thinking we're doing it on our own, he will let that uh, prosperity wane so that we will realize this is not on my own. God gave me this. And in this passage of Scripture, that's what we see in this idea of God giving them the inheritance as he said he was going to give them, and uh, he blessed them with that. The other part of the Scripture that's in between these, the ones we read last week and the ones we're reading this morning is the um, call to the two and a half tribes, uh, the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh. When Joshua calls them and says, you have been faithful in keeping your promise, to go out and fight with the children of Israel, your brothers, while your family stayed in the lands of uh, on the other side, the east side of Jordan. And so now you've been faithful, and so you can go back to your homes. In that passage of Scripture, you'll find out that they were faithful to their promise, that they were going to be there and do the right thing, and God blessed them, and they had um, protection of the Lord, if nothing else, protection of the Lord all that time, as well as the prosperity of the land. You look further there, and you'll find out uh, between that chapter uh, that we went last week, the 15th chapter and the 24th chapter, that the cities of refuge were established, that God told Moses, uh, you allow six cities on the other side of Jordan uh, to be a place where the uh, person who had accidentally hurt someone or killed someone could run for refuge and stay until the high priest was uh, died and then go back to his own home so that the slayer or the revenger of blood uh, didn't get a hold of him. Uh, that, that scripture is kind of um, misunderstood sometimes, but, but basically what it means is if a person is, for example, cutting down trees, the axe head flies off accidentally off the handle and goes and kills somebody, he could run to the city of refuge and know this city, I'm going to be able to stay in here. Nobody's going to be able to harm me here because it was an accident. In other cases where you accidentally dropped a, a stone or a, a tree fell on, whatever it might be, um, that you were had a place you could go. I would challenge you to realize that many of us find the Lord as our city of refuge. We find that we accidentally do something. Uh, in some cases, we presumptuously do something we shouldn't have done. And by the grace of the Lord, he gives us a refuge in Jesus where we can go and say, Lord, forgive me. Help me to find life in you again until I am reinstated by your grace into your love. In this passage of scripture, the Bible says that these um, cities of refuge were given for the man who accidentally did it. It did not mean that the person who presumptuously did, acc uh, not accidentally, but actually murdered someone, uh, the city gave that person up and they were killed. Uh, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, the Bible says. Um, if they slew someone, they were killed as well. And so in this passage of scripture, we hear that um, the cities of refuge were given. And then we come to the 24th chapter, at the end of his life, where Joshua, as he died uh, at 110, brings all the children of Israel to him to talk to him. And obviously, um, they come to where he is at Timnath, uh, Sirah. Uh, they come and, and gather around with the elders. The word is given to the elders. The elders go back and give them to their families. And Joshua, in this passage of Scripture, God gathers them all together, and he gives them this decree. He gives them this warning. You have been blessed by God to be given great and precious promises. I would encourage you to recognize that as we heard them earlier on here, when the Bible says that God gave them this place, that there was a reason that God went all the way back to Abraham, who is the father of their faith. Abraham, who is the father of the children of Israel, literally um, the father of, of Israel, Jacob, who had his name changed to Israel. So the father of the children of Israel, that the promises were given through Abraham to Isaac and then to Jacob and through the children of Israel. And God goes all the way back there and says, I remembered you when I gave Abraham the promise. I gave Abraham, Abraham the promise knowing that I was going to give that fulfillment 
through you. Uh, he goes all the way back to Egypt and talks about the, the ways that he brought them out of Egypt, the miracles he performed for them at the Red Sea, at the Jordan River, at the um, uh, falling of the, of the walls of Jericho, as he gave them victory after victory over enemy after enemy that's in there. And he reminds them of that to allow them to realize God has been faithful to us. I heard a story many years ago that my father's pastor uh, told him about a woman who had come and said, I'm just going to give up. I'm tired. I'm going to give up. I don't like what's going on. And the pastor encouraged the person, go to your closet just one more time and just thank God for what he's done. Go ahead and quit if you want to, but thank God for what he's done. And she came back the next week to church that she wasn't planning on going to again. And the pastor, uh, somewhat surprised to see her, said, I'm glad you're here today. And she said, I took your advice. I went back to the closet. I thank God for all that he had done for me, and I realized I couldn't quit. And I would challenge you to realize, if you will just think about what God has already done for you, what a great blessing he's given you in your life, day by day, hour by hour, watching over you, your wife, your family, your children, taking care of them, the people that you love, you will realize that by the grace of the Lord, that he loves you so much, that he's done everything and given everything for you. And at that point in time, it should be our desire that we are faithful to Him in every area, of our, our, every area of our life to walk with Him. In this passage, the Bible says God reminds them of all those things to allow them to know. And what He's really saying and doing, I did this and I did this, He's really saying, I loved you. I loved you from the beginning. I've carried you all the way through. And I would encourage you to recognize today that the promise of God to them is the same promise to us. I love you. I want to take care of you. And once again, love is only received after it is given and it's only a gift of God when it is received by our, us into our hearts. And when Jesus says um, that he loves us, we need to remind ourselves that it's by the grace of the Almighty God that the scripture says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We see people in the world around us who have not received the blessing of the Lord because they choose not to. Not because God hasn't given it. Not because God does not want them to know that he wants to adopt them into his family, but rather because they have chosen, I don't want, to be, I don't want him to be my father. And I would encourage you today that by this scripture, the Bible has told us over and over again, I have loved you, I've been with you. And that's what uh, Joshua repeats to them, that's what the Lord tells them. And then Joshua says, now fear the Lord. Remind yourself of what he's done with you and be reverence, reverential before him. Serve him. If you have decided in your heart that um, you don't want to serve the Lord, then go back to the gods of Abraham, your father, or go back to the gods of the people on the other side of the Jordan or in the, in the land of Egypt. Go to the gods that are in the Amorites, gods made of men's hands with silver and gold and wood and clay. Um, and go and serve them. But as for me and my house, he says in, in verse number 15, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you might wonder about that promise, me and my house. And I challenge you to read the New Testament when the Bible tells us, and I think the 16th chapter of Acts, when Paul is talking to the Philippian jailer, he says, if you will repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will be saved and your household. And we wonder how that happens. And here's how it happens. When you and I are dedicated by the grace of the Lord to the word of God, and we are dedicated to salvation and the Holy Spirit, we will live the life that will be so pleasing to the people around us, they'll want to be just like us. They'll want to have what we have. Uh, we will find out that our families are overjoyed with the fact that they have a father and a mother who cares enough about the Lord, not just to say, do as I say, but rather do as I do. I'm serving the Lord, and as this passage of Scripture says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He found out at this age, and very, very many years after he had begun with the Lord, that the same God that he met in the wilderness while the children of Israel were wandering in the tabernacle of God, while well, he met the God in the tabernacle of the Lord, that he, by grace of God, had been carried to this day and found success after success after success. I would encourage you, you and I can find that same thing by finding that same God, the God of the tabernacle, the God of the temple, the God of the holies, the God through the Lord Jesus Christ who has given us salvation, and we can be successful day by day, hour by hour. You look at this passage of Scripture, the Bible says, after he encouraged them and said, you choose the gods you want to, but I'm going to choose God, uh, the, the God who brought me out of the land of Egypt, I'm going to serve him, that they said, God forbid, King James, God oh, forbid yeah. that we should serve another God, but rather that we will serve the Lord. And then Joshua encourages them by saying to them, you cannot on your own, and that's what it really means, on your own, or own, your own strength, serve God, because he's a holy God and a jealous God. I would encourage you to recognize that without the help of the Holy Spirit, we have a hard time serving God. When we are human in our humanity, 
the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, that the carnal mind is at war with God. It's at enmity with God. It does not uh, put itself in subjection to God nor the things of God. But by the grace of the Lord, we can come to God and present our body to Him and have the renewing of our mind so that we can serve God by the grace, gift of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God to do the things that please Him. It really is much easier than it sounds because literally what we're saying here, if you begin the day with the Lord and ask Him to follow you, lead you through the day, ask Him to be with you and be obedient to Him, every day can be successful in Him. We need not fail in any way. Uh, we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. If you look at the second uh, book of Peter, chapter number one, he says, if you do these things, you'll never fall. That passage of Scripture says we need to add to our faith. And there's several things that are mentioned there. But I would encourage you to recognize that the faith that we have, that God is a God of love, is the same faith that when we add to that, the virtue of walking in the word of the Lord, the obedience of walking to Him, the love that we have for our neighbor, the love we have for our Christian brother and sister, the charity of God to love the world around us, that we can add to those things that God has given us. And by the grace of the Lord, we can never fail. That's a marvelous promise. In this passage of Scripture, you'll find out that Joshua is an example of that. He was an example of the one who gave his life to the Lord wholeheartedly, as the Bible says about he and Caleb, wholeheartedly, and God gave him the blessing of being able to be successful. You look at this passage of Scripture, you'll find out that towards the end here, he said, I know that you have chosen God, you've said you've chosen God, and so I'm making a covenant with you today that you are witnesses that you've decided to choose God. He tells them, I'm going to set this stone up today here, and it's going to be a witness for you. I'm going to set the stone underneath an oak tree. Notice that both of them were more permanent than not. Doesn't mean they wouldn't pass away, but the oak tree and the stone were more permanent than they were not. They may be gone today, but they were more permanent than temporary. We'll put it that way. And so what Joshua said was, this stone is going to be a witness, a testimony. You may wonder how that happens. I heard a man saying one day that a stop sign is a witness against us if the policeman pulls us over. A stop sign says, I was there, you're supposed to stop, and you didn't. And so, in essence, that's kind of what it is. While, this, while it's an inanimate object, uh, the promise was of Joshua, this stone is going to be here to be a reminder to you and a witness to you that you said you're going to serve the Lord. You said you've given your life and dedicated your life to the Lord. And today, I challenge you, as Joshua did, that today is the day of salvation. You and I, especially in the United States, because we've been given this wonderful blessing, this heritage from the servants of the Lord and our founding fathers, to make the choice, are we going to serve the gods of today? Are we going to serve the gods of the people around the world? Or are we going to serve the Lord God, the God of the Bible? And I would encourage you today, the, the decision you make is going to bring success or failure based on the idea that success comes when we are walking hand in hand with the Almighty and failure comes when we decide to do it on our own. It's not just, and sadly, it's not just a success or a failure here temporarily. It is a success or a failure eternally. Because if we don't learn how to serve God and walk in His Word and His will today, if we don't learn how to walk with Him in prosperity today, in a spiritual prosperity, we will eternally be separated from Him. And in this passage of Scripture, Joshua is telling them, this is what you need to do. You've testified you want to do that. And I challenge you today, make that decision for the Lord. The Bible tells us, as a couple of passages of Scripture, today is the day of salvation. This is the day to decide. I want to serve God. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to find the success that so many people in the Bible found by walking with God and finding that He took pleasure in giving them prosperity. In this passage of Scripture, we go to the end of it and finish it out, and the Bible says that uh, towards the end here that Joshua died at 110 years old. He was buried in the parcel of land that God had promised him in Timnath, uh, Sirah. He decided that's where I want to uh, live, that's where I want to be buried. They buried him there. The Scripture says that, uh, verse number 31, And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua, and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. Notice that those are the children that had grown up they had become adults. They had found success in the Lord. Children in the wilderness. Their parents had decided they did not want to go in the promised land. They listened to false um, uh, reports about God not being big enough to bring in the promised land. And they, they proclaimed by, out of their own mouth um, the, that God's brought us here to kill our children. And God said, I'll bring your children in. And that's exactly what he did. These are the children that had grown uh, up with Joshua. Uh, they had grown into and come into the uh, blessing of the Lord to receive the inheritance of the Lord. And God had blessed them, as this passage of Scripture said, so that not only did they see all the works of the Lord, but the 
the Lord gave them the promise that he wanted their fathers to have that they refused to take. As you look at this passage of scripture, you'll find out and want to finish up in verse number 32. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem in a parcel of ground that Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. You look at that passage of scripture and I want to remind you that God never leaves us hanging with a story not fulfilled. And he told us in the book of, of Exodus, when it first began the book of Exodus, the last few chapters of the book of um, um, Exodus into the book of, of, of um, Leviticus, the Bible says that um, in the book of Exodus, as the last uh, chapter of the book of Genesis says, that in the last book of Genesis, I'll get it right here in a minute, that Joseph said, don't leave me here, but take my bones up with you because God is going to take you to a land. Uh, the first chapter of, of Exodus brings us that hope and that promise as Joseph made the, the children of Israel promise. And it finishes up in the book of Joshua where the Bible says that they took the bones as Joseph had required and brought them into the promised land and gave him the land that his father had, uh, gave him a very place where his father had bought from Hamor, the father of Shechem. When you look at that passage of scripture, I think what it brings to us today as an uh, application to our own hearts is God will take you through to the end. One of the songs we sang this morning in our, uh, song, in our uh, song service was that he leads me. He will lead me over Jordan and he leads me. When the cold waters of Jordan or the time I face death are there, he will be with me to lead me there. In this passage of scripture, I want to remind you, as Joseph said, God will be with you. He will remember you. He will take you to the promised land. And he tells us by the grace of the Lord, I will be with you to the end. It is my desire to bring you all the way through the journey to give you success day by day and eternal success as you choose me. And as you say, that Joshua said that I will, my household will serve the Lord. I want to remind you of one other thing. This is a, remark, a remarkable verse. If you look at Joshua's name in the Old Testament, in uh, Hebrew and Aramaic, Aramaic uh, Yeshua, Joshua, you will find in the New Testament, especially in Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 8, that his name in the Greek is Jesus. Um, I would challenge you to realize that he's a very good example of who Jesus was, being faithful to us day by day, hour by hour, with the willingness to bring us into our reward with him forever. That passage of scripture we talk about in the fourth chapter of Hebrews talks about entering into the rest of the Lord and how marvelous it is when we are able to finally find rest where we say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do what you want me to do. And I know you're going to take care of me. I'm not going to have to fight for it anymore. I'm not going to have to work for it anymore. I'll do it as obedient to you. And I know you said you're going to give me rest. And I praise God today that it's his desire to give me rest. He said in the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I challenge you today, take the yoke of the Lord on. Hear the scripture that Joshua said when he had said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Find success. Make that decision today. And by the grace of the Lord, you'll find that when you have trial, he'll be there with you. He'll bring you through the trial, through the test. But by the grace of the Lord, he brings us success day by day. Father, I thank you today for the word of the Lord. I thank you for this passage of scripture and pray that in Jesus' name that you'll allow the Holy Spirit to interpret to the hearts and minds of those who have heard today, who will hear later on, who will view this later on. I pray that you will be with them and allow them to find success in you as they follow your word and walk in obedience before you. As we ask you these things, we praise you for your mercy and your goodness, your grace and your love and ask in Jesus' name, help us to walk faithfully that we might be a witness, a testimony of the grace and goodness of the Lord and we might say in our hearts, Lord, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We thank you today for it as we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.